Hi everybody, good morning. If it's Monday morning for you, uh, or perhaps if you're listening from other territories <laughs> and other countries, it might be Sunday evening for you. Uh, either way, <clears throat> I wanted to come in here live today um, just to share some tips about working from home. If you've, this is something that you've been uh, needing to do, or perhaps there's been a mandate in your organization that has um, given you permission to work from home, right? A lot of us are sort of self-isolating at the moment to um, just contribute a little bit of better results to the coronavirus epidemic that's going on at the moment. And we're doing our, um, you know, what we're accountable for and what we're responsible for to not spread this into the public world. Uh, so I hope that you're keeping safe and that you're keeping sane <laughs> during this time. Um, and really, um, in a way, you know, even leveraging some of what changes have been happening in the workplace and in the, in the work world in order to explore what it feels like to be working from home and how to stay productive without being in a particular physical space at the moment. So we are certainly living in very interesting times at the moment uh, where things can feel bleak and gloomy, uh, but there may also be a silver lining in all of this in the hopes of um, organizations uh, and workplaces, you know, evolving and opening up a little bit of uh, their procedures to know that perhaps employees can be more productive if they could work from home and how that might affect you personally if you weren't sitting in commutes, if you had a bit more time to spend with your children, right? If you have kids and a family uh, and how you could still be maybe producing even better work if you had more autonomy over the way you manage your time and um, how you may, especially for introverts, for example, who like working in a small space and not with lots of people, People, this may be kind of a little bit of a great practice round for you to explore remote work. So uh, for a lot of people have emailed me uh, in, you know, in our community here about uh, that they've been, uh, you know, challenged to work from home and, and there's some good perks about that and there's some things that they would like a bit more support on and hence why uh, I'm just coming live to you today uh, to kind of walk through some of the five essential tips uh, if you have to work from home. Uh, during the coronavirus crisis uh, and how to make the best out of it and how to make working from home work for you, right? Um, so the first thing that I wanted to uh, talk about is actually being able to sort of use your time um, to not be in commute, commutes, right? Like traveling in the car, right? Going anywhere. You, we lose about almost sometimes like two hours a day commuting in traffic, right? To uh, the places that we go for work. And so what can we do with this extra time that could be really, really um, beneficial for you to start your day with a better morning ritual? Now, I know a lot of people that do work full time, they complain to me a lot about not having a lot of time for themselves, right? Not having a lot of time in the mornings uh, to sort of get grounded and get ready for the day because they feel kind of hustly, right? And they're constantly sort of being extremely um, stressed out or anxious trying to get to work on time, right? And sitting in traffic. So uh, my tip for a morning ritual, if you're working from home at the moment, is to use that commute time that you would have spent being in your car to do something for yourself before you start to open the laptop. Now, this is a really great way for you to start the day prioritizing your uh, self-care, right? Your self-renewal, right? It may be a time that you might spend extra with your family, if that's been lacking in your life. Uh, but you could also use it uh, in terms of that self-nourishment before you start the day to meditate, to do a bit of a stretch, right? Create some movement, right, as you wake up, or to actually commit to exercising if it's something that you haven't been able to do because of your busy work schedule. Now, that's a one perk about sort of having autonomy over your time is to choose how you spend your time. And I, I, I think it'll be really valuable for you if you were to create a morning ritual that can really help you start your day fresh, uh, start your day with intention, and start your day with taking care of yourself if you haven't been able to do that before, right? A great practice to get this into your routine. Uh, and perhaps even if you have to go back to work and be in an office space, you know, two weeks, three weeks from now, you have a particular practice that you have uh, created some habits from that I think can really help you to navigate any stress and anxiety that you might feel when you start your day, okay? So that's the first tip I would give you uh, for working from home and starting the date right. 
The second part, if you have never worked from home before, you might find it a bit of uh, a bit challenging to sometimes keep focus and create boundaries, especially if you have family members that live with you and you're not living alone, right? Uh, so as we do in uh, the office space, we have a dedicated work area, right? We know when we sit down or if you have a stand-up desk, whatever is your format, uh, you know that it's working time, right? So when you are working from home, uh, it's really important to create a dedicated work area again for yourself, right? Uh, if you are able to do it in a room that has a closed door, this is really awesome because it gives you that privacy. It tells people that you are working and, you know, it gives them an extra barrier to have to enter to get a hold of your attention. People with kids, for example, uh, this will be a really good thing to, um, have a, a sort of closed door policy right in your home as you um, start to create that dedicated workspace for yourself or you can hang a sign if you don't have a door uh, if you're working from a corner of a kitchen right or you are uh, in the living room area and you've uh, propped up a desk for yourself right uh, is to, to to educate your family when are your working hours and if you had a sign maybe it's like a little to a token you know um, piece right like a lego set <laughs> of something that you might put on your desk to say that i'm not actually available even though i'm in an open space um it might be you know a sign or a sticky note that you put right on your desk to say that um i'm gonna have a break around these times please come back then uh and same thing with if you have children it might be that you might need to sort of tag team with your spouse in order to um sort of together collaborate on times that you will be working and when your spouse might be working and when you can sort of take uh, take turns in entertaining the children or feeding them or whatever it is that you might need to do. But those conversations are really important to be having with your family members at the moment so that you can feel focused and you can feel that you have boundaries over your working hours when you work from home, right? Uh, so the workspace is important as well. So whatever it is that you can duplicate from what's caused you to be productive in the workplace, like if you have an extra monitor, right, that you really need in place, uh, if you wanted to get some noise canceling headset to ensure that you feel really zoomed in into your work, like whatever it is that you might need, right, to try to just make that, um, you know, prioritize for you in your on your desk so that whenever you start the work for the day, you feel that you have somewhere to go to. You're not working from bed. You're not working at the kitchen table. If that's not conducive for you or working on the couch, you want to be able to right really have a, a, a committed workspace so that you really feel like you're getting things done as you're at work as you're at, at home working. The third tip that I want to give you is about communication. So a lot of people have asked me about what tools uh, they can be using to continue to keep their colleagues updated, to continue to not feel lonely as they work alone, especially if that's something you're not used to doing. Uh, and there's some amazing tools that I use myself, a lot of my clients use when they're starting a business uh, that are free and very, very useful when it comes to keeping uh, in contact with people and not having to use email all the time and actually creating a bit more of a face-to-face -face interaction, even if you can't be in the same room. Now, one of those tools is a, probably a tool you already have, which is Skype, right? Skype is free for everybody. Uh, and most of the time, most of your colleagues will have Skype. So that could be a good way for you to start a Skype group, for example, with your colleagues where people can ask questions or um, ask for help if they need it. Uh, or you can have particular dedicated times for very short sprints of meetings. Uh, I'm not a huge meeting fan because I think a lot can be done uh, without long ass meetings. Uh, but if there are some essential times that you should have a meeting, so if you're managing a team, for example, uh, and you wanna make sure that everyone's on the same page before they start the week, you might have a policy where for 15 minutes or 20 minutes every Monday morning, you do a little bit of a team huddle, right? And you do a check-in on what we're going to be prioritizing this week on in each person's priority, right? And making sure that we are keeping accountable to some of the things that we want to be working on, even if we're not working in the same office. Uh, and it just helps you to keep a finger on the pulse about what's going on, especially if you are managing a team of people. You can use Skype for that. Uh, I like using a tool called Zoom. You can go to uh, zoom.us in order to download the free tool. You can have video conferencing. You can record the calls for people that aren't going to be there. It come, you know, it, it downloads an audio file and a video file. It kind of really, I, I would recommend doing as many things video as you can do if you're going to have a meeting or if you're going to have some sort of communication uh, so that it actually really puts a face to everything and it humanizes the entire experience of using some of these online tools. Okay. So 
zoom.us is a great tool or you can continue to use something like Skype in order to have these uh, meetings maybe on a Monday as a, as a team huddle to start the week and maybe a quick 20 minutes at the last end of a Friday just to have you know um, a, a pulse check on how things are going and if people needed any help uh, they could get that before a fresh week starts again. Another tool that I really like if you want to eliminate emails and try not to have, you know, bombardment of 100 emails coming into your space and distracting you from work is trying a, a tool called Slack. Now, if you go to slack.com, I believe, let me just double check the... Um, the URL here, yeah, slack.com, you'll be able to get uh, a free that free tool as well. It's kind of a bit like an office chat virtual room. Uh, you can even create different rooms for different departments, different rooms for different projects. You could have a water cooler room where people share what's going on in their day, right? Whatever works for you, uh, Slack could be a, an excellent free tool to get your team together on the same page, but allow some access to communication when people check it. Now, it's really, really good to have boundaries on that as well, to say that maybe Slack office hours are from this time to this time so people are just chatting and getting distracted on that chat chat group uh, and giving some some guidelines and uh, like sort of ground rules right and how to use a tool like that could be really really essential for your team to keep in communication while still um, maintaining boundaries and productivity uh, for ourselves okay Hope that's helpful for those three big tools that uh, I love using. So Loom, Zoom, and Slack, and then potentially the fourth tool, Skype, which you may already have. Uh, but I find that with the other tools you can record, right, uh, for video conferencing, which I think can be very beneficial for people that can't attend. Uh, the fourth tip that I want to give you is about movement. Now, um, I realized how much my body was traumatized by sitting in a desk 40 hours a week whenever I, when I quit my job years ago and did a lot and still continue to do a lot in, in my physical body to be able to get my, my alignment and my body back into shape of not having pain. I used to have very, I still do have chronic back pain and shoulder pain because we sort of tend to, um, you know, round our shoulders when we're typing right on a laptop or even on our phones right we're always in this position so the hunching and the you know the rounded shoulders are are huge right for a lot of us uh, that are experiencing any sort of body pain uh, and I think when you work from home uh, a really great way is that when you set up your workstation right is to think about things like a standing desk I know a standing desk has been huge for me it, it has eliminated my back pain more than 50% uh, and it allows me to really be moving a little bit more I sort of do some stretches in between work uh, I use a bit of a timer, so I, I have an app uh, that I use, you can search for it, you can use the Pomodoro technique, you can search for any app, time app, a time app, uh, uh, apps in your phone, for example, that allows you to, for example, time 45 minutes of working, and then it'll beep you to take like a 10 minute break or a 10 minute movement break, uh, drink a glass of water, right, move your body. I have a stretch band that I got from my physiotherapist that I will stretch the back of my back, right, for 10 minutes on the hour. Uh, and that allows my body to maintain movement and agility, right, and uh, alignment in order for me not to be stuck in a particular work place like this, right? So again, if you are working from home during uh, the coronavirus crisis, this is a great opportunity for you to create some new habits uh, and, and, and heal your body as you keep working from home, right? Uh, and being able to stretch, move any, just move your head left and right, up and down, right? Do that stretch band technique I told you about, get on a yoga mat, do a couple of stretches. Uh, that can really help you to not feel exhausted uh, and feel um, just hard and, you know, like tight by the end of the day and a great way for you to do it when you're not in a workspace at the moment. Okay. And then the last tip I have for you, if you are working from home, uh, is about meals, eating. Uh, we are very used to sort of eating at a cafeteria or, you know, getting a quick bite to eat. And we eat at our desks a lot when we're working in the corporate office, right? Um, and I think that what uh, we can do in the meantime is actually think about meal prepping, right, for ourselves to be productive, to be able to um, ensure that we are being nourished and you, and have nutrition while we're working, uh, and that can really allow us to uh, not have to cook uh, every you know breakfast, lunch, and dinner, especially if we have a particular work hours that we are we are uh, we are really needing to commit to. So if you spend, for example, a Sunday evening meal prepping your lunches at least for uh, the next week, you'll find that your productivity will soar because you're not having to take 
large amounts of breaks to make food, especially if you can use those breaks as reading or stretching or exercising, and you don't have to worry too much about feeding yourself, uh, especially if you're working full time. Okay, so meal preps are really great for you to maybe freeze some uh, smoothie, you know, fruits and, and, and put in like a protein powder in the morning if you want it to have a shake. Uh, you could be um, meal prepping, you know, for your dietary needs uh, in containers and Ziploc bags into your fridge and heating them up again. Uh, and it'll last a bit longer in the fridge or the freezer as well. And it's going to allow you to really be prepared uh, as you work from home now. Okay. Uh, and if anything, you have any questions beyond what of the tips that I've um, given you today, please ping me by writing a comment and your questions and, sh and tell me a little bit about where uh, you're working from these days. Um, if you've been uh, told that you can work from home and how your experience have been uh, remote working and what you're hoping to learn and get better at in terms of working independently as we leverage this opportunity uh, to be able to create more autonomy over our time uh, in the midst of a crisis. Uh, thanks so much, guys, for listening. Hope you're staying safe, staying sane, and keeping calm uh, as we go through this together and navigate this. I'll check back in on you later, later this week and hope that you're having a good time uh, being at home and spending a bit more time with your family.